And, and Your Honor, I am hearing on behalf of Mr. Zandi today. Um, he did ask me to request a continuance in this matter. He had a previously scheduled engagement, which made him out of the office this week. Um, we did file a response late last week. I don't know if with the holiday, if that even made it to Mr. Martinez Schroeder, but nevertheless, Mr. Zandi is requesting a set over. Uh, given the fact that there is an attorney involved in this matter, it should be set over to the attorney docket as well. Um, I believe ba based on the case number and uh, where we are today, I believe that's going to be on your docket. I know you're not here and your docket's closed next week. So my understanding is the 18th is the next available docket. So if uh, my request today is granted, I would ask that it be moved to the 18th. All right. Thank you. Mr. Martinez. Yes. Good morning. Good morning. Were you able to receive the response that was filed on behalf yeah. of Ms. Amnot? Yes, I got it Friday, uh, the 30th of June. Okay. Um, so, and were you, I'm assuming you heard Ms. Bliss uh, covering for Mr. Zandi and requesting a set over uh, so the parties can review. And um, I guess as a technicality, because an attorney is involved in this case, it needs to be moved to a different docket. Uh, so- okay. What is your position on those two things? Well, I'm still self-presenting myself. And uh, I have a response. I don't know if I send that in or do I just present it to the judge, Your Honor? Well, if, um, it, and let me, I'm going to answer your question in a, one moment, Mr. Martinez. Um, Madam Clerk, is the 18th available? Uh, let me check. Okay. Um, so if we set it to the 18th, so that would be just under two weeks away from now, um, you would have an opportunity to file your response on the other side and ensure that the judicial officer is able to review that response before your hearing. Okay. And I just go into the courthouse and do the document as well? Yes, you would response. just file it like you, because I think you started the um, adequate cause motion. So you would just file it the same way you did all those other documents, but you would need to also make sure that Mr. Zandi's office received a copy of those, whatever you're filing as well. Okay. Okay. So I, I'm, I am going to set this to the 18th at one o'clock PM. So instead of looking for the self-represented docket, you're just going to look for the family uh, family law docket B. Yeah, I see so that it's, it's on the on docket Tuesdays for child support. PM. It's kind of a funky one because... Um, the parties had appeared at certain points and suggested that they could reach an agreement. So the court kept setting it out, hoping um, that the parties would reach an agreement. Uh, at our last hearing on June 8th, Mr. Molina was present. He confirmed the parties could not reach a final agreement. The court set it over today to enter a temporary parenting plan. The, um, Mr. Molina was supposed to file his parenting plan. The docket shows that it's on for child support. I think child support should be stricken. We have a temporary order of, order of child support that was entered in January. At the court's request, I had drafted a final child support for our last hearing on June 8th, but since the parties had not reached an agreement, it's not appropriate to enter it. And I don't know whether Mr. Molina followed through and filed a temporary parenting plan. As far as Odyssey shows, there is no... Uh, I'm going to let Miss this Leanne help in just to make Sorry, sure I admitted her. Um, so I do not see... And it looks in the register of actions. Sometimes we can see that something was filed, just hasn't been scanned in yet. And it doesn't look like anything other than um, your most recent proposed uh, child support worksheets have been entered since the 8th. Um, so I'm just going to strike today's hearing. All right. So Ms. Rodriguez. Right. Thank you, Ms. Powers. Good morning. How are you? I'm good. All right. So... It looks like so, and I and I'm trying to play catch up, and I apologize for that. So I'm just going to ask a few questions of you, if you don't mind. Uh, there course. was a motion for an adequate cause decision filed by Mr. Bowers yes. back in looks like March. <clears throat> you were able to file a response, ask for a continuance. Uh, then there was a few review hearings. Um, each party has filed a proposed parenting plan. Um, there's some financial documents, child support worksheets. And, uh, but there's not yet been a finding one way or the other on the ad adequate cause. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. And it appears to me that the last time that you were in court was the eighth. So just about a month ago and Mr. Bowers was present at that time. And it appears he was, he's normally is present. Is that fair? Uh, yeah. Okay. He had requested the continuance in, in an effort to obtain an attorney. So that's why we continued it 
and I didn't see any um, for him. Okay. And I had the last question I have for you is, uh, are both of the children residing with you at this point? Yes, they've been with me since March. Okay. Um, and is there a current parenting plan that you are comfortable operating under? We have a parenting plan, a final a parenting plan that was uh, done in 2015. And that's what we follow currently. This is the first time he's ever followed it, but that's what we're following currently. Okay. I'm showing a final parenting plan from August, 2018. Is that? Oh yeah. 2018. Okay. Okay. Yeah, so we started sure. it and then it finalized. But... Okay. All right. Um, well, I've reviewed everything that he's filed. Um, and given that he's not here and hasn't filed anything else, we don't have a notice of appearance. Um, I, I don't see any reason at this point to grant any adequate cause to change the parenting plan from where it's at. So I'm going to deny, deny that request. He's obviously free to refile that, but I'm going to deny the um, the order at this point. I do see that you've presented um, an order. And I have reviewed those orders. Let's see. And so the parenting plan that you've submitted, is there any difference in this parenting plan to the one that you've been that's was entered in 2018 the one that i filed is uh basically because there's some um there's some issues with transportation because i have another parenting plan with my younger two children and some of the times that we exchange i would be unable to be in both locations at the same time there are some sundays at six o'clock where i'm supposed to be there in longview but i also have to be here for my other children um and um he's responsible for picking up. So Fridays are fine, but I also have exchanges on Fridays at times. So that is, it's a little different just because it changes some of the transportation in an effort to, to not have those issues in the future. All right. Give me one moment to get through. I just got the paperwork this morning. Otherwise I would have reviewed it uh, before we started. So I apologize for the delay. Just give me a moment here. Okay, here's what I'm going to do. So I've reviewed um, the orders. I'm going to. I am going to enter the order uh, denying adequate cause at this time. And just for the record, Mr. Bowers is still not in the waiting room here. Um, so he can obviously refile that. Uh, did you file? And I. And this is one another thing that I'm not seeing. I. In your response, did you request to change the parenting plan? I did put in um, just a brief explanation as to why um, there are some transportation alterations. It's not a major change in the parenting plan. And there's also like no Christmas or Thanksgiving included in our orders from 2018. So that is a, an additional change. All right, so I'm going to also sign the final order and uh, findings to change the parenting plan. Uh, the, frankly, I don't I don't see a motion to change the parenting plan. Uh, however, based on my review of your proposed from today and what was has been followed, uh, it only expands Mr. Bauer's rights. So, uh, as far as instead of seven days in the summer, he gets um, two nine day time periods he gets um he can pick the three-day weekends instead of just getting the third weekend of every month um gives him more holiday time so um based on that reason alone and uh i am gonna authorize the parenting plan to change i do not have and i do not see a motion to adjust child support so i'm not going to enter uh the proposed child support uh at this time however there could be a reason to do that based on the change in, well, lots of things. Could be your uh, income looks different. His income looks different than when the orders were entered in 2018, uh, but I'm not comfortable uh, just unilaterally changing everything when I'm denying adequate cause and there's no motion to adjust child support here. So I'm not gonna sign the worksheet or the change in support. You may want to talk with Ms. Halpin about filing a request to adjust uh, and address child support, but I don't have that before me today, but I will sign the other three orders that you submitted. Does that make Thank sense? you. Yeah, okay. the judge previously had told me to file one. We were just kind of waiting on the decision that was going to be made today 
in order to file that. Okay. Uh, I'm assuming uh, you may follow up on that. So uh, we can uh, discuss that once that motion is filed and notice is given. And, but I, like I said, filed, or excuse me, signed the other three documents as it relates to the adequate cause and the parenting plan. And thank you, Your Honor. On All right, thank you, Ms. Rodriguez. Motion uh, that was filed by uh, Selena, the respondent in this case, and looks like that was filed relatively recently. I should have marked that uh, the sixteenth. And yep, um, I'm surprised that you got notice and were able to file a response. But here we are. Uh, there was a motion for the cause. Um, and for the record, is there a, a Selena Le Wallow here? Not hearing response. There's nobody in the waiting room. Um, I, okay, so just for the record, for a little background, uh, there was a dissolution filed by uh, Mr. Le Wallow back in December of 2022 that ultimately ended, ended in a default and a uh, entry of a decree of dissolution uh, in April of 2023, along with a child support worksheet, order for support, parenting plan, final order. And then there was uh, a restraining order request in early May by the respondent, which was denied. And then that was followed in June by a petition to modify uh, along with their proposed parenting plan. So uh, I've reviewed everything that's been filed. There's a statute 2609-270 that discusses adequate cause and modification of parenting plans and several factors need to be in place in order for the court to consider a parenting plan adjustment, especially so quickly after one was entered. And I'm not seeing any of those. Um, and I am not seeing Miss uh, Lawala present. So at this point, I'm going to deny the motion for adequate cause. So basically, that means, Mr. Lewallo, that things are just staying how they are, have been. All right. Okay. And I have yeah. uh, her motion that I'm just basically going to say that there is not adequate cause uh, at this point. And I'm going to sign that and submit it to the clerk's office. And... Everything, and if she, I guess that doesn't bar her from filing something again, as, as she's kind of already done. So um, there's nothing to stop her from doing that. But uh, in the review of the record and what she submitted for the that initial finding of adequate cause, I, I can't make that finding. So I'm going to deny her request. Okay. Yes, Your Honor. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you. Good luck. Yeah. Or my sister, um, who is the current, current guardian of Brunswick, is trying to get on right now. I am his stepfather, I guess you could say. I've been with him since he was 18 months old. Okay. Well, it's if about. you know she's trying to get on, then I'm just going to wait one moment then. Okay. And sure. I'll call a different case. Just give me one second here. Sure. Yeah, I'm down there. Right here. Um. So I have reviewed everything uh, and I don't see a response. It looks like service was made and we were here on the 22nd. Uh, court set it over from the 22nd of June to today to ensure there was time for um, a response and I have not received one. Have, have you all received one? No, she's never reached out to us since she's been with us. Okay. So I've reviewed everything that's filed. I'm going to um, uh, enter the, the order as presented. Okay. All right. And any, we currently have, I believe, a, so we have a current expiration date of 8-26-23. Um, we'll get that new uh, order entered. And um, I guess, is there a reason, and I, I, I'm i going to rely on you, Rhiannon, is there a reason at this point to set another review date? That's to ensure you're signing the full minor guardianship order today? Yes. So no, there is not. Okay. 
All right, so I'll sign that. Uh, I just don't have the paperwork in front of me. The clerk has it in the other room. So I'll meet with her after the stocket, get that signed. I would imagine you could pick up copies of that within the next couple of days. All right. I think it is. We've never done this before. So is there anything else that we should know or that makes everything final? Nothing else is required. Um, that's all that I'm aware of at this at this stage. Okay. Kathleen right. Lieber, Thank you. Good luck. I apologize. Good morning, Your Honor. Counsel, court appointed counsel for um, Catherine Martin. Good morning, Your Honor. This is Michelle Lieber, the emergency guardian. Good morning. Good morning, Your Honor. I'm her father. And what's your name? Chase Shop S C H A U P P. All right, thank you. Okay, so we were last year. It looks like on the twenty seventh of June. Well, uh, we had Miss Martin, uh, Miss Day, and Mister Shop were here. Uh, no, that was me, Your Honor. Um, I didn't change my name on that day. It it was me on there. It says Shop thirty two. That's my sign in name, and I didn't change it. I'm sorry. I apologize. But it's Michelle that was here last week or on the 27th. Okay. The, the notes uh, from the clerk indicate Catherine Mary Martin was present. Chase Shop was present and Christina Day was present. So just reviewing that. Um, there was an order extending the immediate minor guardianship. It was set to today's date. Uh, and what are we reviewing today? So last week, Your Honor, this is Tina Day. Uh, last hearing that we were here was set over. Mr. Lee wasn't available. So this is um, really the first order to show cause hearing, if you will, the first chance to move forward um, in this matter. I've begun my investigation. I have not completed that yet, but I have been able to meet with um, the petitioner, the child, um, and mother, and I've been begun gathering some of the records that are necessary. I have not met with father yet, um, but I hope to do that and be able to have a report to the court before the end of the month or by the end of the month. Thank you very much, Ms. Day. All right, so um, Mr. Lee, you're here for Ms. Martin, is that correct? Correct, yeah, yes, Your Honor. Um, court appointed to counsel for Ms. Martin, um, the child's mother, obviously, in this action. Um, again, Your Honor, this is tech, as, as um, the GAL aptly noted, this is our first um, real show cause hearing. Um, given that we are some, you know, we're, we're about 45 days approximately towards um, the 60 day mark um, with this uh, emergency minor guardianship, naturally, you know, looking out for my client's interests, I would ask the court today to take in consideration consideration, um, the fact that my client's employed, has safe housing, um, to the best of my knowledge. There's no pending criminal case or CPS case. She's also going to school. The reason I bring up these factors is I would just ask the court to look at, um, you know, what, what the ter what basically what the conditions of the minor guardianship are and whether we, and again, looking after my client's interests, uh, we would ask the court consider maybe loosening and providing my client more time with her child. Um, but again, I, I understand the GAL is continuing her investigation. Um, so we, you know, we, we don't want to unfairly step in the GAL's toes. All right. And I don't know, Miss Day, if you feel comfortable addressing that at this point, and then I'll turn to Miss Leeper. So I have been able to do a home visit with mother. Um, I just was able to do that, to do that this last week. Um, the home is appropriate for day visits. It would not be appropriate for overnight visits at this point in time. Um, and it would need to be carefully monitored for um, safety and cleanliness. Um, at the time of my home visit, it was appropriate and there's no um, safety risk as far as the child visiting mother there. Um, there may be some transportation challenges that need to be met but I think that that would be appropriate. I would not be comfortable with overnight visits as the mother and child um, are would, have, would be residing in the living room, dining room area. There's no place for them. And there's another individual in the home who has a history that would not make him a safe person for this child to be around. So I would ask that um, if the court was going to consider visits in the mother's home um, rather than at a what they're currently doing, which is meeting for a couple of hours in, a, in Centralia Chehalis, that the visits could occur at mother's home for four to six hours. Um, they could take turns with transportation, one delivering, one picking up kind of a thing. Um, but that individual um, would need to be restricted from having any contact with the child. And this that's a, a essentially a roommate of it's a mother. step parent. Step parent. Okay. So it would be the it would be a step grandparent. It would it's mother's it's mother mother lives with her mother and her husband, and it's the husband that should not be allowed to have any contact with the child. 
Okay, thank you. All right, Ms. Leeper, you have uh, been the primary guardian for the most recent time period. What is your, do you have any opinions on uh, any additional visitations? Um, I think, uh, in my opinion, I think it should stay as it is. Um, we do meet in Centralia and it's from 10 to two. And by the time I get uh, Kathleen back at two, she's tired and it's past nap you know, time. Um, and so, and I think if we extended the time, um, it would just, it would make a harder day for Kathleen. Um, she rarely naps. Um, and I think that it would just be a harder transition, you know, for her, I'm thinking of her and her, uh, you know, well-being a longer time in the car. She is not, she does not appreciate the car ride, the long car rides. And how many, um, is that just once a week visitation for those four hours? Yes, your honor. Okay. So it was my suggestion that um, the transportation could occur and the visit could occur on a Saturday. The child could be brought to mom at nine or 10 o'clock. So there's one trip of an hour and a half to two hours. She would have four to six hours with mom, which would also allow for time for nap, lunch, regular parenting functions, which aren't going to happen, which are not really happening currently. And the current visitation at four hours at a public location isn't going to last once the weather changes, whether it's super, super hot or we head into fall and winter. Um, then if mother had visited at her home for four to six hours, then the mother could arrange for transportation back. Again, she's only having an hour and a half to two hours. This transportation would be occurring on a Saturday where traffic is less. So it's not back to back traveling for the child, which is what it currently is, is the child travels down, they visit for a couple of hours, and then the child travels back to the guardian's house. And this would allow time for regular parenting time for mother, um, more contact, which I think is necessary since mother has been the primary, and would also allow me to have an opportunity to observe those visits and see the child's interaction. Um, this child has fairly significant delays and is in need of fairly extensive services, which the petitioner is providing currently. But that does not negate the fact that she also needs to have contact with both of her parents. Um, I, again, I have not met with father. I don't believe he's having contact. I don't know if he is, but that's something that needs to come next as well. Your Honor, um, on Saturdays and some Sundays, I am able to uh, take Kathleen down to see her father because I think it's important for both of them uh, to be able to see um, her. Um, I am willing to drive to Longview and meet at a mutual place on Saturdays, and then we can, I'll just take her home from there back to Tacoma for their visits instead of Centralia. Cause I understand that the four hours in Centralia is it's hard on both parties. Mr. Lee, any objection to that? Sounds like pretty beneficial to your client. Yeah, uh, no, no objection, Your Honor. And I'd just like to um, uh, reinforce that we, we appreciate the um, the GAL's um, assessment as well. And that I, in that in particular, I, I concur with um, uh, Ms. Day's assessment here and would ask the court for uh, to give great weight and to provide uh, that relief accordingly. All right. Well, well let's do an, an expanded visitation. Um, and so I would just ask, it sounds like Ms. Sleeper may have a Sunday may work better than a Saturday on occasion if the parties are able to work together. Um, so we'll just say uh, one day, uh, a one weekend day a month from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. or as otherwise agreed by the parties. And then so Saturday from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. that would be uh, for Catherine. Yes. And if you uh, uh that's the only vegetation we're going to address today. If there's, if a, you need to have it be a Sunday, just communicate and hopefully that can be worked out um, between the two of you. And then, um, so 10 to four, and then uh, we'll keep that in place. And then Miss Day is a, the 27th of July work, or would you rather the first week, like the third of August for your report? I'd rather say the 3rd of August um, to come back and review. I'll try to have my report out be a week before that. Okay. And I know that father has signed a join uh, on a joint or an agreement to this. I would like father to contact me. And I'd like to be able to observe his visitation as well. Um, and that's something that Miss Day, you're able to work with Miss Leeper on? Yes. Yes. Okay. Your Honor. 
Um, is this every Saturday from 10 to four? Unless it's a Sunday. Unless it's a Sunday. Okay. Thank you. Sure. And I guess uh, if there's, if there's a, um, if it needs to be 11 to five, or if there's some wiggle room there or at just 10 to five, yeah, just as long as they're communicating and all parties are in agreement. Um, and then we will review this matter and hopefully have the report from this day, August 3rd, 2023 at 10.30 a.m. 10.30. Okay. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you, and Your Honor. I apologize. What day is it again? August 3rd. That's a Thursday, 2023 at 10.30 a.m. And let me just... Until the Your August Honor, third date. Your Honor, uh, if I may speak for just one moment. Oh, do your attorney want you to? Um, it's just about my scheduling. Uh, um, Ms. Martin, I'll, I'll, I saw your message. I'll, I'll jump in here. Um, my, my client, Your Honor, um, asks to have her daughter on her birthday, August 10th. Um, however, given the fact that we have a uh, review hearing on August 3rd, um, it might be um, more with, without jumping into attorney client relationship here, um, that would be your honor's discretion, whether to address that now or then, given that we have a hearing on the, our hearing is scheduled on August 3rd. I would object because I would like to see her on her birthday too. It's not fair to me. Okay. Well, we'll, I'm not going to decide that now. We'll, we'll review that on the 3rd of, um, 3rd of August and see how things have gone with the expanded visits and, uh, get more input from this day as well. All right. So thank you, um, Your Honor. Right. There was a motion to compel Thank filed, you. and that's what it appears that we're on for today. Looks like the trial was recently struck. Is there anything else other than the motion to compel that we're reviewing today? Uh, yes, visitation uh, with my client, Your Honor. All right. And I did receive emails Looks like there was a proposed order granting expanded visitation presented by Mr. Anagnostu. Um, and then we have still the motion to compel to deal with. Is that correct? It is, Your Honor. Right. I'm going to ask for a continuance on the motion for expanded visitation. Mr. Agnostu and I um, talked about this and agreed that because of the trial, um, we would hear this motion. Uh, Mr. Agnostu is for expanded visitation. I didn't get his amended pleadings until yesterday. Um, I was up until 2 a.m. finalizing um, a response to them, which I do have. Um, and should be with the court today after uh, speaking to my clients. What I ask is that we set this over till Tuesday. Um, that way, Your Honor can have those pleadings, which would be a reply. The guardian ad litem also, um, I, I believe, only got these pleadings on, on the 5th. I understand from Mr. Anagnostu's side, um, there was a holiday. Um, there was some snafu with the July 3rd um, pleadings that were sent out. So I think, I, and I'm not asking for a week or anything even like that um, mm -hmm. on the Tuesday docket would be fine with me. You can also hear the motion to compel on the same day. Uh, so, Your Honor, um, numerous issues uh, floating around, um, primarily caused by the fact that we had trial. We started trial. Uh, we took witnesses uh, and then trial got continued. That, that was started uh, in front of Commissioner Nelson. Um, we didn't finish. Uh, we got. We had a reset of the trial to continue trial on June 30th. Right before June 30th, um, uh, Superior Court Judge Marilyn Hahn issued an order that the trial was stricken um, for June 30th. And so now we're, we have a reset. Uh, when that occurred, when it got stricken, counsel and I had a conversation and said, because um, she said uh, you know, she wanted to bring her motion to compel discovery. Um, kind of my objection is we're in the middle of trial. Uh, generally, you don't hear motions to compel discovery in the middle of trial. Um, but I need a I need to, the court to hear my expanded visitation because that's what trial is all about is to get to the next step. Um, Commissioner Nelson said, I'm not going to expand visitation because we have trial on June 30th. Well, now we don't. So so um, counsel and I talked and we agreed that um, that issue uh, should be heard. I filed the motion just to to give notice to to everyone that uh, you know, and it even reflects in the in the minutes um, on Odyssey that we're going to talk about a visitation. We need to expand visitation. I have a lot of concerns, primarily that Commissioner Nelson has heard this entire case. We're in the middle of trial, um, and um, I, I'm not sure what his schedule is now. Uh, my client. Um, 
is traveling from Central Oregon. He knows all these facts from Central Oregon, an hour and a half or so uh, to get here for each visit. He has to come here. Uh, he's low income. Uh, you know, he's young and working and tr trying to get uh, his, his feet underneath him. Um, and, and this trial gets continued. He needs to be able to take his daughter to his residence uh, in Oregon. And, and that's what we were requesting. And that's what was going to be heard at trial. Um, and uh, and here we are. Trial got continued. Um, and it, it's a mess. It's a mess. But um, uh, so I, I put that to your, your honor. I'm, I'm not sure what Commissioner Nelson's schedule is. Um, I don't mind sending this over to Tuesday if, if you want to hear these. I, we, we need to get it heard sooner than later about my client's visitation. Um, and uh, um, that's it. That's kind of the, the background. And, and you, you can kind of hear my frustration. Uh, I, I completely understand. Um, so in your heart, if I might. Um, I, don't, I don't need to hear okay. Ms. Winkles. Um, <clears throat> so a couple things. Number one, Commissioner Nelson is retired. So I don't know what his schedule is. Uh, so, um, uh, this very well may end up being in front of another judicial officer moving forward. So that's part one and that hopefully we can work something out. I don't know if someone's going to review the record that's been entered thus far and try to pick up where, um, where everything left off. Um, number two, I had a note and I didn't understand why it said visitation on there. And I only saw the motion to compel, uh, this morning, um, well, today, I reviewed this late last night. This morning is when uh, the actual motion uh, and declaration showed up in Odyssey. Uh, so I haven't been able to view it. It's only a couple pages long. Um, but given the lateness, and I guess I don't know. Let me see here. I don't know if Ms. Farr received any of the information or has been able to review it. Your Honor, I only received the motion at 4 p.m. yesterday, and I have had conversations through email with Mr. Anagnostu, advising him that, that I am to be notified with proper notice when these motions are filed. I think that he disagrees um, because he said that they agreed between attorneys to have it heard today, but the GAL is a party to the action and um, should be receiving the proper amount of uh, day's notice when a motion is filed. So I'm not prepared um, today to respond, except to say nothing has changed since the last time this type of motion was brought to the court and the visitation was uh, for expansion was denied. And, and your honor, also, we do have a trial setting scheduled for next Wednesday on the 12th. Uh, the 12th of one? I believe. So trial assignment calendar? Okay. Yes. I appreciate that. Thank you. Um, so my hope is that the parties won't have to start all over again. But what I am, I am going to set it to the 11th for visitation. If Miss um, Winkles, it sounds like she's fine with doing the motion to compel at that same time. Uh, I would, I'm not sure who the judicial officer doing trial assignments next week is. Uh, but I, this is obviously a very unique situation that you kind of started. And now uh, the, the judicial officer that started the case may not be available to finish the case. Um, so please make sure that you uh, let them know that uh, in case my hope would be that a judicial officer is able to review what's already been done and you don't have to start all over again, uh, unless the parties feel like that's the best way to go. So um, we'll set this to the 11th at 1030. And then it looks like the 12th at one o'clock for setting a, a new date. Yes, Your Honor. Um, all right. Thank you. I'm asking that Thank this matter be set over. Um, at least a week or, or potentially two weeks. Um, I received substantial documents in response to my client's motion. Basically yesterday, I received them, um, uh, some on uh, Monday uh, and then Ms. Winkle's stuff late Monday. Um, and so uh, uh, Tuesday was a holiday. Uh, I need time to respond uh, to their numer numerous documents that I received. And Your Honor, the only reason that I'm asking for no continuance is procedurally the motion is incorrect. Um, in a minor guardianship, if you are going to change custody or change visitation, there has to be a number of things in place. First, it's a petition. It's not a motion. It must be personally served on the parties. Um, it's absolutely not a motion that's in the statute. That's actually on the pleadings themselves. It cannot be mailed. It must be served under CR4. So it has to be personally served. So there's been no service. Um, in this case. Second, 
Um, the uh, Mr. Anagnostic's clients have no standing. They're not family members. They're quote unquote interested parties. Adoption of the child's uh, mother um, out of Mr. Fletcher's hands and into a different parent cut that tie, which means that we look at the criminal history of Mr. Fletcher, we look at the criminal history of the other party, which we wouldn't necessarily do if it's family. They both have criminal histories, which preclude them from asking for from being guardians at all. Now we'll see an organ report that essentially says that they're clear. Um, that's not the case. It's Brian Thomas Fletcher from 1969. You'll see in Mr. Agnostic's report, there's no middle initial. Um, uh, Brian Thomas Fletcher. Uh, that has to be an organ with middle name or it comes up as nothing, um, which is why we gave your honor the organ felonies. It's 21 felonies in total um, and the watch report. It means Mr. Fletcher has no reason to bring this case. He is completely precluded. He's not a family member and he's been convicted of a felony, including theft, dishonesty, or assault. So as Miss Tracy uh, Hatfield or, um, and, or um, sorry, Hedrick, and that precludes them anyway. Um, on top of that, it's res judicata. The final minor guardianship order in the case was entered on April 5th of 2023. That was like six to eight weeks ago. Um, so unless something has drastically changed in the last six to eight weeks, this, this issue is precluded. Um, there's no new information in the motion. Uh, there's no, this is purely a procedural issue, which is why I didn't want to continue it. There's no new information there. There's, we want to see this child. We want this. We want that. We love this child. Maybe they're doing this, but we don't know. The fact is that's not enough. There's no information. It's already been decided. There's been an order in April 5th. This is another attempt at biting the apple. They tried to do a motion for revision that didn't succeed. Um, they apparently did not try for a motion for a new trial. But in any event, it's been done. It's done and dusted. Um, so the only way they can get visitation rights is through the petition for visitation, which exists under the statute. But Mr. Fletcher is not the child's grandparent. He lost three of his children to a dependency action, they then went on to have other kids. When he lost those children and they were adopted out, his parent-child relationship was severed, which means he's not the grandchild of, or grandfather of anybody in this case. My point is because he adopted the parents and now they have their own children. Um, so I'd ask for no continuance. I'd ask to strike these pleadings. I actually asked for CR 11 sanctions. And then I don't think Mr. Agnostio, not against Mr. Agnostio, against his client, uh, and also under the frivolous, uh, frivolous statute, I don't think they told Mr. Agnostia that they had 21 felonies. Um, and because of that, and thus he brings this thing forward saying that his clients are clean of criminal activity. That's not the case. There's a reason they lost their children in the first place, who then went on to have children. And that was severe neglect and abuse of these children in the state of Oregon. It's in Washington. It was decided this, even if you vacate after you are on DOC because of COVID, it doesn't mean it goes away. It doesn't mean that you were never convicted. What it means is it was vacated after the fact so you can get your weapons back. It still means that you are precluded under the Minor Guardianship Act if you do not have a relationship, a family relationship with the child and adoption severs any family relationship. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Winkles. Ms. Farr, I know you wanted to uh, weigh in. I'm assuming it's similar to the last case. Well, um, actually, Your Honor, I, I agree with Ms. Winkles and the the, you know, Mr. Anagnostu filed his motion on June 27th. I responded on Friday the 30th. I believe Ms. Winkles responded on Monday. There's been plenty of time for Mr. Anagnostu to review the responses. If he didn't schedule it in enough time to allow for a second response from him, that's not on us. And this, um, my, one of the, concerns I have is because this action is brought in bad faith and inappropriately, the taxpayers are fitting the bill for my services on this and they shouldn't be. Um, I just, uh, this matter is done and over with. The guardian was put in place. The only ongoing uh, issues right now are mother's visitations. That's the only reason I'm in this case. Um, and, you know, the motion should be uh, denied and um, as Ms. Winkle said, um, you know, the Fletchers are not, are not parties to the action anymore. They, they don't have a right to keep interfering. All right. Any response to that, Ms. Rena Ignacio? Yes, Your Honor. Um, you know, the Guardian ad litem, I have plenty of time. I got this yesterday. Uh, Ms. Winkles didn't respond until like 4.30 
on Monday, the day before a holiday, and I didn't get this until yesterday. Uh, and I've had uh, you know uh, opportunity to meet with my clients, and I, I can respond to all these uh, statements and allegations. I just haven't had time. You know, they bring up um, my clients' uh, uh, you know past criminal history, but when you look at this, the, the document they filed, um, it's um, a false ID. Uh, you know, back in two thousand five, dismissed. Um, uh, you know, a second one in 2005 dismissed. Um, a, uh, it goes to count, you know, two, three, and four, all these allegations. It looks like there's a lot of allegations, you know, filed against my client. These are all dismissed or, or vacated. Um, the, uh, I don't know if these have different dates on them or if they're the same thing, but they've, they've dropped a bunch of paperwork on the court of, dismissed allegations um uh, you know against my client from 2004 almost 20 years ago um and um I, you know here's a identity theft dismissed um and then it you know it says identity theft three four my i mean the pages go on and on and on and i can point that out to the court uh what they filed um is inaccurate uh, and their allegations are inaccurate i just haven't had time I need some time to, to respond to this. There, there's other allegations. This is not frivolous. I just I disagree uh, with counsel. When you look at the, the statute, um, this is uh, RCW 11-130-050. I cited it in my motion. Uh, says that the court at any time may appoint court guardians and co-conservators. Um, and uh, I haven't had an opportunity to, to go you know in detail through Miss Winkle stuff since I get, got it yesterday, basically, um, uh, to, to respond that, you know, my clients are named interested parties in the Aldridge's action. They're named inter interested parties. Um, and uh, they're asking, uh, they're, they're pointing out to the court that they had significant time, they had custody of Serenity, and they're asking for um, to continue that relationship. They believe it's in her best interest uh, that that relationship be continued. Um, and we would like to present that to the court. Um, why that's important to Serenity, this young child. Uh, but I need to respond to all this stuff because it's a, it's a smokescreen to to deflect uh, the issues. And you're asked for one word or, or two word reply. Res judicata. We've already been here. There's a final order. It was decided. Unless there's something new from April to now, which there's nothing in any of those pleadings, it's precluded. And it's just another bite at the apple. Um, and I guess, it, Mr. Agnostic, there was also just basically, a, um, there needs to be a petition, not a motion. Any response to that portion? Well, uh, again, it's uh, I'm looking at RCW 11-130-050 that says the court can, uh, can uh, you know, set rules uh, at, at any time uh, and it's um, upon a motion of any party or the court itself can 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 do that. Uh, I don't believe it requires a petition. Uh, we are not modifying the guardianship. We understand that the court granted guardianship to the Aldridges. My clients are interested parties in that action, and they're they're asking the court for the benefit of the child that they be allowed to see the child. They had the child up until the court granted uh, custody to the Aldridges. And they, they're presenting that to the court by way of a motion. I don't see where it's required that we file a petition when they're interested parties and have been involved in this action. But I haven't had an opportunity to brief Miss Winkle's response. It is a mandatory form that's available from Washington court forms. It is a petition to change or modify a minor guardianship. Anytime right. a guardian is changed, according to statute, anytime visitation to others is changed, anytime that there is a change in any affect minus parenting time, even when it comes to visitation with the children, as long as that issue has not been continued and been allowed to be open, and it is in this case with the mother, then the proper method forward is a petition to change or terminate a guardianship. That is a mandatory form that is available in Washington court forms, and it clearly lays out the service standard of that document. So I, I agree with Ms. Winkles. Um, the criminal history part, frankly, I haven't had an opportunity to review. I, do, I don't, um, it appears that Ms. Farr and Ms. Winkles are on uh, both of the, the belief that 
uh, these parties are precluded based on those criminal records. You're saying that criminal records have been either expunged or those folks were found not guilty of those crimes. Um, here, here's what I'm going to do. Um, I'll set this over one week for a response to the um, 13th, 1030 a.m. Uh, frankly, Mr. Anagnostu, I, I, in my brief review of the record, I, I tend to believe that Ms. Winkles is correct in this assertion. Uh, and if if she is correct, then it is concerning because it, it, it may appear as though the parties have misrepresented themselves to, to the court. Uh, so any requests for fines or fees will be reserved to, to next week upon uh, the court's ruling. But I'll give you a, a one week to respond to, to everything that was filed by Ms. Winkles. Thank you. So we'll set this to the- Good morning, Your Honor. Mallory Smith, Guardian of Lightroom present. Ms. Smith, long time no see. Uh, who else do we have present for this case? Uh, I'm present, Your Honor. I represent um, uh, Shauna Ray, the mother. All right. And I believe Ms. Overby may be in the waiting room. She has some connectivity issues. Uh, have... Yeah, it seems like I saw her uh, earlier. Yes. There was an Overby here for a long time. Uh, I'm present, Jason Chapel, their father. Thank you, Mr. Chapel. I don't have anyone in the waiting room. I will keep an eye out for her. Um, so I have this as a review hearing. And there's a notation that to review Beth Fellow's visitation notes uh, from the clerk there. Um, looks like we were here <clears throat> on the 15th. Uh, supervised visitation was ordered. There was a report from uh, Ms. Smith filed at the same time. And um, that's where we're at. So is this just to review how the visits have been going the last couple of weeks? Uh, somewhat, Your Honor. So what, the, what Commissioner Nelson indicated was that he wanted two more uh, visits to occur um, supervised, paid for supervised. My client's um, uh, on, she's disabled. She's on disability. She doesn't have a whole lot of money. Um, but he indicated she had to pay for um, supervised visits uh, on two more occasions and he wanted to get the notes. She had a visit on July 1st. I had a conversation, uh, well, text messages going or emails going back and forth with Miss Fellows. Um, she hasn't gotten her notes um, prepared for the July 1st meeting yet. Uh, visitation. Um, it, it's our hope uh, that we can change the supervision. Um, we had provided a name uh, to the court and the court had uh, interviewed her and um, determined that she's got a great background. She's a quasi child guardian of some type, but um, I don't have those notes from here right now. Uh, anyway, uh, to go to uh, supervised visitation that is not paid for. There's no fee. Uh, this is a, a friend of my client and she was qualified by the court uh, to be a supervisor. And I don't have her name right in front of me. Your Honor, it's Miss Christina Mendez. She actually, I believe, works um, through the WISE program as well as, as a profession. Um, she is a, a family member through marriage. Um, I had an opportunity to speak with her. Um, she did um, message me earlier today. She had planned on appearing at court today, but was pulled out away for a child in crisis. So she was not able to attend today. Um, and it's my understanding that uh, Ms. Mendez um, also inquired of the court of um, potentially um, becoming a party to the action as well. As a, as I guess, potential proposed guardian. Okay. And is, I guess, uh, Ms. Smith, as the GAL in this case, and the knowledge of Ms. Uh, Mendez, is there, do you take a position on, and this is obviously, the court doesn't know what Ms. Fellows said, uh, and I don't know if Ms. Smith, you heard from Ms. Fellows since July 1st, but um, what's your comfort level with uh, essentially moving to non-professional supervision or supervised visitations with Ms. Mendez? Um, as it, so if we look at the dynamic or the functionality of this, um, I think Ms. Mendez, um, is capable of providing supervised visitation. Um, I had a very candid conversation with her about, um, 
some of the things that um, I think would be reasonable to expect during this visitation. So it would mimic similarly to the professional supervisor, the children and the mom cannot be out of earshot or sight of Ms. Mendez. Um, Ms. Mendez inquired as to whether they could participate in um, social functions. They live in Kath Lamet, so um, the, the Bald Eagle Days, if they could participate in that as a group, allowing Ms. Ray to have that interaction with the kids. Um, it gets a little um, tricky. Uh, that would create more commute for the children specifically if the visits were moved to Kath Lamet. Um, and um, I am I'm hesitant in Ms. Ray's ability to um, remain consistent in navigating that. We have visitation calls that are still um, not occurring with regularly with regular consistency, um, and we have you know the supervised visitations haven't been consistent. They've been I think two or three of them have been canceled for um, a plethora of reasons. Um, with that said, though it. Ms. Ray is very limited financially on what she can and cannot do. Um, so it is an inhibitor to her to have to pay for supervised visits in order to exercise that time as well. Um, I think if we were to able to, I'm not, I, I'm not sure as to Ms. Mendez's ability to um, facilitate those visits in the Longview area to minimize some of that travel um, and that burden for Ms. Overby as well. Um, so those are kind of my considerations and concerns. I think that Ms. Mendez could facilitate the visits, um, but that it just creates, it's, it's a shift of challenges that we're going to be navigating. I don't know that it's mitigating any challenges at this point. Okay. Uh, Ms. Tran and Gossu. Uh, well, I, I, I concur with, um, with the guardian ad litem's um, assessments, um, my client does have financial issues uh, and really can't afford uh, the super paid for supervised visitation. I know she's missed uh, one of the visits just primarily because of finances, um, and uh, she just couldn't. She just uh, doesn't have the money. So, um, you know, the the children, if you uh, have gone through the file, they want to see their mother. They want to have a relationship with their mother. Uh, and it's being hampered by the fact that they are now in Tacoma uh, with um, with the petitioning party um, and uh, Miss Overby. And, um, uh, you know, it, it's going to be somewhat potentially of a commute for her. But uh, this is to uh, foster and maintain the relationship my ch my client has with the children and the children have with her. So, um, it, and it, it will be financially difficult uh, for my client uh, to get to, to Wakayakum County, but she's going to do it. She's she's you know re indicated that at you know whatever she has to do, she'll she'll it's it's been a been a long ordeal for her to um to get to this point i just wanted to say i am present i am jessica overby the guardian of the children and have been <clears throat> following along on youtube while i was having connectivity issues thank you for your patience all right thank you um okay so not hearing uh any any concerns and, and I assume Mr. Ananastu would be honest with the court about if, if Ms. Fellows indicated some serious concerns with any visitation that's occurred recently. Um, I, go ahead. I would like a chance to speak on that because I have a very different opinion. Mm -hmm. um, I have spoke with Beth Fellows several times and there have been concerns risen and she was supposed to be reaching out to um, Mallory Smith in regards to these. Currently, Braden and Shauna are bickering constantly. They Braden doesn't want to do the phone calls. He doesn't want to go to the visits. He is really struggling with their communication. And I strongly disagree that it would be in their best interest to leave the supervision of supervised visits at this time, especially with the conflict of interest of becoming a, another guardian potential. 
that tells me that there is some ulterior motives on Christina Mendez's part. Um, and that she would no longer be an impartial supervisor for Ms. Ray, um, which she stated in our last hearing herself that her intention of would just be to reunite the children. And that is why she would want guardianship, even though that is not in the best interest of Braden and Paisley at this time. Braden is pretty adamant that he wants to go to Hood Canal School next year here in Mason County, which is where the children have resided the majority of their childhood. They have lived out here in Mason County through the 50-50 custody between Ms. Ray and Mr. Chapel. And Shauna has not been exercising any of her extra phone calls that were ordered by Mr. Nelson next or last hearing. She isn't calling during her regular call times consistently. She's ending the calls early. She's fighting with Braden. They're having loud arguments. And so it's, it's just really not going very well. She was supposed to set up video calls. She has not done that at this time. She doesn't have a phone to even set up these visits. Right now, Beth Fellows helps bridge that gap in communication between myself and Miss Ray to make sure that the visits have a consistent schedule because her phone is so wonky all the time. I have four different numbers right now to attempt to contact her if I need to get a hold of her for some reason. And that is a huge concern. And I don't think moving away from supervised visits until her communication struggles are solved is wise at this time. Thank you. Right. Anyone want to? Um... Oh, yes, Your Honor. Uh, brief response. We are not moving away from supervised visitation. We're, we're keeping supervised visitation. Um, uh, we understand uh, the concerns that have been uh, presented. Uh, it's just not paid for because my client can't afford uh, to see the, the, you know, do the paid for supervision by Miss Fellows. And so this is a, a great opportunity of a very qualified uh, person to supervise the visits. And, you know, if the court wants some, um, you know, some kind of reports from her, I, she, she was, I'm not sure if she's one of the phone calls here, but I know she was at the last hearing and she would be responsive to the court's instructions and, uh, and give reports. And Ms. Smith, anything else uh, based on Ms. Overby's comments? Yes, Your Honor. I, um, I guess the, um, I think Ms. Overby's um, assessment of the inconsistency and the concern um, raised is, does have merit. Um, the visitation, um, the phone call visitations are um, remarkably inconsistent. Um, there's a lot of challenges that are, that are alleged that prohibit Ms. Ray from exerting those. Um, I will still maintain that supervised visitations um, absolutely should remain. Um, I guess I would defer to the court whether they need to be professionally supervised or not. Um, I would suggest potentially considering having Ms. Mendez um, review or consider maybe an oath of supervision to understand the full breadth and, and depth that the supervision needs to occur um, if the court decides to move to unsupervised. Um, Miss Ray is significantly stunted on creating consistency. It's been a challenge um, that predates this matter. Um, I was previously appointed on the parenting plan matter uh, a couple of years ago. Um, at this point, I, I believe that uh, Ms. Overby is accurate in, in saying that um, Brayden is at the age now where he has the awareness and understanding um, to know that this inconsistency is can be mitigated and can be taken care of, and he's not seeing that. Um, and that's really creating a, a pretty significant fracture for his relationship with his mom at this point. Um, and so it's, it's for those reasons why I truly believe that supervised visits do need to maintain. But like I said, it, how we accomplish that, I would defer to the court. Okay. Thank you. I have one more note. Um, Shauna ended up calling like right in, well, Beth Fellows office called us minutes before we were leaving to transport the children to one of her visits of the two that she was supposed to have with a cancellation that significantly stressed the children out and very much upset both of them. And so she's not even being consistent with the visits that she's supposed to be having now. And that too is creating a huge fracture in their relationship altogether. And so setting it up through somebody who isn't as familiar with creating this consistency like Beth Fellows office is 
I feel is just going to set them up for even more failure and more communication struggles between not only myself as their caregiver right now, but between the kids and their mom, whether it be the time of the visits, the consistency of them happening on a regular basis. And I do want to put in that the drive is even longer for these kids who honestly don't need to be in the car for that much longer to make it all the way to the other location. Yeah. Yeah. It is a huge concern of mine to change the supervisor at this time. Okay. I appreciate that. That's noted. Um, So obviously the best interest of the kids is first and foremost, uh, but mom, there, there needs to be an opportunity for parents to kind of repair some of the, the shortcomings. Clearly, Miss um, Ray has consistency problems. I don't even her own attorney is uh, agrees with that in this case. Um, I don't like to hamper visitations because of monetary or, or lack of monetary funds. Uh, that's frankly is um, physical the child's physical safety concerns. Uh, you know, can very well require professionally supervised visitation. We're still clearly in an, in a position where supervised visitation seems to be appropriate. And I think the consistency factor that everyone is concerned about is 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 important to to keep in mind as well. Um, so here's I'm going to allow uh, the supervised visitation to occur with Miss Mendez. Assuming that she uh, submits an oath of supervision, so she understands what's required of her, and that reports are filed uh, after every visitation. I'd like to review this, um, and currently, and I don't have it in front of me, What? how many visits are, is it one a week that we're currently, currently scheduled? Currently, she's doing every other weekend visitation. Okay, so we have, um, so if I set this over for one month, we'll have two visits. Right. Should, should have two visits. Okay. Um, my hope is if if she's not having to pay for these and schedule it in the timeframes uh, that that are available through the supervised visita- visitation center, um, that maybe the consistency will improve. I'd like to, what if we reviewed this in about the 17th of August at 1030? That should allow for at least three visitations, possibly four, depending on which weekends those fall on. And um, frankly, I think at that point in time, if there's issues with Miss Ray getting to these, canceling at the last minute, even when money isn't a factor, then the court is going to reconsider uh, dialing back those visitations because uh, I take Miss uh, Overby's comments seriously that uh, the kids... Uh, Frankly, it, it, it could be very detrimental to, to the relationship between the two because children may end up just resenting mom when she can't come and maybe just taking a pause on those would be uh, a better situation than um, the anticipation of a visitation that doesn't happen. Uh, so I'd like to review this 17th and see uh, and have kind of some reports from those visits if for some reason um Miss Mendez isn't available. They still can be professionally supervised. That would still have to be set up, though, by Miss Ray. I would assume she would choose the other uh, as, if it's available. All right. The, Any- um, the uh, oath that you wanted um, Miss Mendez to sign. Who's going to provide that? Do you provide it, or does the guardian ad litem, or do I put that together? Or- I think we have one on our web page. Um, um, I do have a, an oath of supervision. I can review the court website to see if it is similar um, and provide that to her and, and discuss that with her and then have her file that. Perfect. Perfect. All right. Your Honor. Good luck. Thank you. Your Honor. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I would like to set up visitations with the kids on Zoom for the next few weeks. All right. Uh, Ms. Smith. What's the GAL's position on that? Um, Your Honor, I am agreeable to Zoom visitations. Mr. Chapel um, remains challenged in maintaining, gaining and maintaining sobriety. We don't believe in-person visitations should be um, uh, awarded at this time. Um, I think a, a Zoom meeting um, would be appropriate. Um, 
I guess, Mr. Chapel, I, I guess I'm not sure. Currently, are you engaged in inpatient treatment now, or are you still? Yes, at the moment, I'm in inpatient at uh, um, North Sound Behavioral Health Center. And I think it's in Everett. And it's a 58-day program. How many days you have left, sir? I get out uh, August 11th. Okay. And they're able to help you facilitate those Zoom meetings? Yes. yes. Okay. Is there a time frame that you need to stick within or anything like that? Um, Saturday, Sunday. So weekends would work best for you? I think I can set up a Zoom time pretty much any day of the week. Okay. And I just, you know, if it's court ordered, then I can get together with Joe and set it up and talk with my counselor and make it happen. Ms. Overby, uh, any concerns with working with Mr. Chapel on getting those set up? I do not have concerns about getting those set up. I would like to, my, my one concern is that if we start doing these regular Zoom visits with Mr. Chapel, that he continues to have regular communication with the children even after the August 11th, and that this isn't just a short-term jump in and then ghost them again because that really has hurt his relationship with his children as well um and so the follow through afterwards is important to me i i think i i would completely agree with that i'm sure mr uh, chapel would agree with that and my hope would be that yeah. uh, mr chapel would um he's addressing uh, some of the concerns that exist in this case and trying to get some help through this treatment program uh, so mr chapel i guess i'm just going to stress uh that it's super important the consistency, even if it's just a Zoom call. Uh, your kids really need that from you, and I'm sure you need that from them. So um, I, I'll authorize uh, Zoom contact, and then we'll, we'll review how that's going on the 17th of August as well. So if anybody has any concerns or um, consistency is becoming an issue, well, well you can address that uh, on the 17th as well. Uh, your Honor, is that one Zoom call per week at the availability of the parties is that um yes yeah, so let's let's start there and then we can uh if things are going really well we can look at uh, potentially increasing that on the 17th of august uh and i just had a question uh, mr chapel indicated what facility he's in but i i didn't catch that i think he said north sound behavioral health is that is that what you said mr chapel yes okay all right. I don't know, Mr. I don't have all the orders for today. Um, so I don't know if there's, if there's Mr. Anagnosti, you can put together an order um, for what was done today, or if you've supplied one and I can just add to it. Did you supply one? Uh, I don't think so. This has been kind of, okay. I got involved in this kind of midstream and I think it was um, Commissioner Nelson had set it up for these various reviews, but I can put together an order. I would greatly appreciate that. Okay. And then I will sign it up on presentation. And um, Ms. Overby, I appreciate you working so hard to get into the Zoom hearing. And I appreciate you working with Mr. Chapel to get those Zooms set up. And uh, we'll review this on the 17th of August at 1030. Can, can I get a little bit of clarification about these visits with Ms. Mendez? Um, I would request that those occur on the weekends that are already scheduled as Beth Fellows weekends. Um, as some of our schedules, like I've been, I have those as reoccurring in my calendar. And so I have not planned over any of those visits, but there may be things on the weekends that are not those weekends. And so if those weekends could stay consistent, I would appreciate that. Um, and who is responsible for the communication on those visits? Is Shauna going to need to set those up and communicate with me about those or, cause that's, that's where my hesitancy and concern is, is where, how are we going to talk about this and get this set up? And so if there was some clarification on that, it would be appreciated. Mr. Anagnostu, it sounded like you wanted to respond. Uh, yeah, I was wondering which weekends, when is her next visit? Is it this weekend or is it next weekend? It is next weekend. So next weekend. Um, and uh, I can, um, Ms. Overby, I, I think I have your email, but I'm not sure. If you want me to, to we, you confirmation of the visits and that kind of stuff. 
we have communicated via email, so I'm pretty sure that you do have it, and it is record of the court as well. It hasn't changed. Okay. Um, and so you are going to be communicating. Right. I'll, I'll communicate with my client, um, and uh, that um, uh, I, I assume you'll take the children to Waikiki County to Miss Mendez, and my client will either be there or arrive there shortly after. But I'll confirm all that. Okay. So it's, so I'm not going to, we're not going to sit here and hash out the details. Really, it's going to be Miss um, yeah. Ray and, you know, by, uh, by and through her attorney that needs to take on the responsibility for getting these set up, uh, communicating, making sure it works with everyone. And ideally, I think I would agree with Miss Overby. We should try to aim for the same weekends that are currently set since um, her schedule shouldn't be completely disrupted based on the change in um, uh, being non-professionally supervised. So let's try to stick with those same weekends. And if that doesn't work for all the parties, I guess just I'm just going to say this for the record, then uh, we'll move on. But uh, if for some reason there isn't availability from Ms. Mendez and Ms. Overby, I'm not going to uh, fault Ms. Ray for that unless it's uh, I'm calling you on Friday night to schedule a visitation for tomorrow and uh, there's no notice. So yeah. thank you. Uh, thank you. Right. All right. Good then luck. I have we'll Brunswick Swaronson. 23400013608. All right. And um, is it cut birth? Am I saying your last name correctly? Yes. Okay. My first thank name you. is Cadron. Cadron. All right. That's a neat name. Okay. And then Mr. Peters is here on this matter as well. Yes, Your Honor. And um, Ms. Farr is here. So, okay. This is what I gathered from my review of the record. Uh, Ms. Uh, Cutbirth was essentially wanting to switch to withdraw from uh, the guardianship as primary custodian. And Mr. Peters was going to step in as primary custodian and file uh, a petition. Yes. Yes. I see that. And so I saw that there was a review on the 22nd in front of uh, Commissioner Nelson. It was set over today for uh, Ms. Cutbirth to file her uh, petition to terminate and for Mr. Uh, Peters to sign or to file his uh, motion to become custodian. And I have the termination petition for Ms. Cutbirth. I have nothing from Mr. Peters. The uh, commissioner actually set it over for the 16th. And then I went ahead and filed paperwork instead. Um, the issue being that I was not able to serve Ms. Kroll um, for this specific, for the relinquishment. It was actually set over for next week, though. Um, okay, I see that. You're correct. So Mr. Peters has until next thir the 13th. Okay. Yeah. There was a petition filed this morning. It went in. I, I tried to get it done yesterday. I got the waiver of deferral fees done yesterday, but the actual petition for emergency guardianship was filed this morning. We do have a case number uh, on that. The, yeah, that okay. all did happen. I am willing to wait until next Thursday for the 16th for court. That way it would give time for the paperwork to be kind of put into circulation. And that way Bruno doesn't have to go through any foster care systems. I don't want to see that happening with him. Okay. And it, it, it appeared that there were some concerns with you working with Mr. Peters and Mr. Peter Peters working with you. Are you guys uh, going to be fine over the next we, week? We, yeah. we have resolved that issue. It was a big misunderstanding. Um, Good. Mike, okay. one of my biggest concerns, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt. No, go ahead. One Your biggest concern? Is that um, we can't find Shira to serve her. She is... Currently, she has a warrant out for her arrest, um, from my understanding. I just found out about that, like, this morning. Um, but uh, we can't find her to serve her. She has gone MIA. We, I tried calling her even on her cell phone, and I told her I needed to have her served with paperwork. And she said she would meet up with me, and then she never did. And her phone, I don't know if it's disconnected. I haven't been able to contact her on her phone number. Or anything. I do have an email for her. I just don't know if I'm allowed. We're allowed to serve paperwork through email. Okay. I mean, I know we are, but I know we have to have permission from her. But okay. I can't contact her to serve her. 
All right. Uh, Ms. Farr, any yes, Your Honor. Know, way in here? Yes, Your Honor. So if if um, Mr. Peters is granted the emergency guardianship, which I would assume he would be, I haven't seen the paperwork. I don't know what reasons were put down, but if he is um, granted the emergency guardianship, then I will uh, help. And I'm appointed to that, which I'm assuming I would transition over into that case. Then I would help him with service. Um, as the court is aware, there are different options and I would go over what those options are with him at that time. Um, I didn't know that the parties had resolved the issues, um, between them, between them and are now getting along well enough to help Bruno, um, for another week. So I think that that's fine if that is accurate information. Um, and then, you know, hopefully the court approves the emergency guardianship today for Mr. Peters so that Bruno can be protected. I do think that if we filed it today, it's five court days. So that would be next Tuesday. We go to court again before the 16th or would we just go to court on the 16th? I don't know what you filed. So I don't, if you, oh. I don't know what, nobody has sent me copies of anything. I don't know. It was it for an immediate. Yeah. It was order. just an immediate order for um, emergency temporary guardianship. The, and the criminal history was done and, and submitted with that paperwork too. Okay. Um, here's what, um, Madam Clerk, is there is there a possibility since this matter is um, set for the 16th with next, sorry, the 13th next Thursday, um, is is there a possibility if that paperwork comes through, we can um, set it for the 13th so we can kind of try to deal with everything at once, regardless of, of service at this point? I think we can. I, I'm under the impression, though, that the um, emergency order already went back ex parte, so it might be in a judge's hands currently. Okay. But if you want, I can I can try to look for it and put that date on there. I will. Um, as soon as we're done here, I'm going to I'll go check the, the box that that stuff comes back to us in um, and try to grab it if it's there. And it, it, assuming both parties, I understand the service um, and I can't unfortunately give you legal advice on the service. There are. Uh, but it sounds like maybe if you contacted Miss Farr, she has some information for you. Um, but I'll try to look through that. And it's not if Mr. Peters and Miss Cutbirth don't have an issue with um, trying to get the newly filed case onto the 13th uh, for at least its first uh, first time in court to uh, at that point in time, then I'll try to make that happen and find out, find that order wherever it is this morning. Okay. Yes, that's fine. I, I, uh, and if I may, um, they, we waited to get copies until we just, until we, uh, they had made a decision on signing it or not. And so when we get those copies, we'll have those copies made if we go pick it up and it's signed and then make sure we get that stuff to miss far right away. Please. That's super important. So I appreciate sure. that. Sure. Of course. That way I can make sure that the proper orders are before the court for next sure. week. And I, yeah. And I apologize. We're balancing like busy, busy schedules. And I know that's everybody. And I, I just, we, you know, we, we did what we needed to do and, and it was all filled out correctly and all the, everything done the right way. So and when I, I appreciate and I just, your time. I, I appreciate the um, that you guys a have worked out your problems. B that you're um, trying to help this little guy that that needs, needs the help. And I lastly understand how difficult it can be for non attorneys to try to wade through this process. Oh, uh, I will just kind of again say Miss Farr is an amazing resource uh, to have. And any questions or concerns, she should probably be one of the first points of contact because sure. she, if she doesn't have the answer, she knows how to point you where you where you can get the answer. Excellent. Right. Okay. And okay. I don't know about, I'm, I'm sorry, one last thing is I don't know about service for Shira, but I know that she is aware and was in court on our last court appearance. So she does know that we have court on the 16th. That is something she's aware of. So, And there hasn't been any phone calls, nothing, nothing coming through for Bruno. No okay. contact. Okay. Okay. Well, then um, by agreement, it sounds like we'll set this to uh, the 13th at 1030. Uh, get the copies. I'll find the paperwork. Um, we'll get the date set for the 13th. And um, please make sure you get Ms. Farr copies of everything. Absolutely. Sure. And can I ask one more question, Your Honor? Sure. Um, so will they would they still call me today to come pick up the paperwork if it's signed and done? Or will I just wait until we have court on the 13th? That's it. I'm going to ask the clerk. I'm assuming that they let you know once you can pick okay. up. Okay. Yep. Okay. Is that correct, uh, Rhiannon? It is correct. 
Okay. Okay. So yes, you'll still get a phone call. Okay. So Great. your honor, it sounds just for clarification, it sounds like you're um, not that you don't want the immediate order put in place that you just want it to be heard on the 13th for the petition to replace for the emergency guardianship. That's a good question, because if I sign the order as an emergency uh, minor guardianship, that essentially then we have potentially complete com competing orders uh, with Ms. Cutberth and we haven't fully kind of closed the loop. So um, I'm going to look at the paperwork and what I'm going to do since we already do have uh, a guardianship in place. And it sounds like Ms. Cutberth is good for the next week. Um, I'll probably just set it for review on the 13th and not sign off on that immediate um minor guardianship, Mr. Peters, and that's not me denying it. It's just delaying it just so we can sure, handle sure. everything at once. Understood. Thank you. Okay. Your Honor. And Thank I'm you sorry. for bringing that up, Ms. Farr. Yeah. I'm sorry, Your Honor. You yes. will also have to sign an order extending Ms. Cutbirth's until that date today. Oh. He's actually already extended oh, no. the 13th. Yeah, it is extended through the 13th. Oh, okay. Perfect. Thank you. All right. Um, I will uh, go track down that order, and then we'll see you all back on the 13th at 1030. Thank you. Thank you so much. Right. Thank you. Thank you. Good luck.